be here. Some messages that you preach, it seems like they fall right on with the service and with the praise and the worship. And then some you preach, it seems like they don't go with it at all. Yeah. So that might be one of those tonight. <laughs> if you'll go to 1 Samuel chapter 28, y'all pray for me. After I read out Samuel, I'm going to be going to 2 Timothy, if you want to have that ready. First Samuel 28, the first verse. And it came to pass in those days that the Philistines gathered their armies together for warfare to fight with Israel. Now I'm going to skip over to verse 3. Now Samuel was dead. Now I'm going to go to 2 Timothy. Second Timothy chapter 2, the third verse, it says, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. That's all I'm going to be reading. Y'all just pray for me. And when I was reading this today, it said, And it came to pass in those days that the Philistines gathered their armies together for warfare to fight with Israel. And I read a few more verses and it said, And Samuel was dead. And when I read that, it, 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 it smote me in the heart. I know you've read that in the Bible where David got smote in the heart because it said that the Philistines gathered their armies together for warfare and Samuel was dead. And that's who, that's who the Israelites looked to for all of Samuel's life. It said that he, he, he led Israel. And in a crucial time in their life, it said that he was dead. And then Paul told Timothy, be, be a good soldier for Jesus Christ. But I got to thinking about the Philistines and Israel. It seems like Israel is always related to the church. That's what we compare it to from the Old Testament to the New Testament. And I got to thinking about the Philistines being the world. Now if you, if you think about it for a minute, they're, they're, the, the Philistines are everywhere in our day. They're, they're, they're encamped about us all around us. The cell phone, the TV, you go to the workplace, you go to the school, it seems like the Philistines are everywhere. And after you look at it and you start looking around, you realize that Samuel's dead. And I, and I was thinking about that today. That the, the pews, it seems they get lighter and lighter and the world gets more full and more full. And the Philistines' armies keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And all the while, everybody's looking for Samuel. And then you get the news that he's dead. Now, and I wanted to talk about being a soldier for Jesus Christ. What it takes to be a soldier. It, it said here that, the, that they were encamped about Israel... And that Samuel was dead, and then Timothy told him to be a good soldier. And, and what I had on my heart was the king's looking for good soldiers. Yes, now, the, the, anybody can, can come into the church, and they can make a profession, and they can do whatever they want to do, but being a good soldier is a different thing. I started reading on, on terms in the military today, and one of them I read on was AWOL. I didn't know for sure what it meant. I knew they left the army, but I didn't know what, what exactly it meant. It means absent without official leave. Yes. Now, if you look at the Sunday morning crowd and you look at the Wednesday night crowd, there's a lot of them in here tonight that's AWOL. Yeah. They didn't get the commandment from the king. They're absent without official leave tonight. They're absent because they don't want to be here. But the Bible says, I looked at the word discharge too, and I started to think about the people that went on, that served for the Lord, and they've died. They've been discharged. But we've got a lot in here. Yeah, on Sunday mornings, when Wednesday nights come, they're AWOL. We don't know where they're at. They may be at home. They may be at, we, nobody knows where they're at. But the Philistines' army is getting bigger and bigger. That's the truth, Sarah, if you'll come back to the pen, I, I, just, I don't have much. Lord. Being a good soldier for the Lord. Yes, sir. When I read that today, that Samuel was dead, it, it, it made me about cry because I got to thinking about our day. There's, I, I hear stories all the time about the old timers. And, 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 that, and I didn't grow up in church, but I hear stories that Jason will testify and the elders will testify yep. and they'll talk about this one and that one that's passed on and went on and they're not here anymore. Right. Samuel's dead. We need somebody else to step up yes. and to fight a good fight for the Lord. That's right. I don't know if you know anything about the Salvation Army, but William Booth was the leader of the Salvation Army. And, and, and he went through the streets, he traveled from city to city, and he was gathering people. He was winning them to the Lord. He was being a good soldier of Jesus Christ. He had this new convert with him. And I, and I read about this. And it said he was, he was witnessing to this drunk man. And the drunk man, as he was witnessing to him, spit in his face. 
And it said he, tr he tried to witness a little bit more and he spit in his face again. And then he spit in his face again. And the convert that was standing behind him started to cry because he seen what William Booth was enduring. He didn't swing his fist. No. He was just standing there taking it. Come on, Brandon. The convert said when he got done, there was spit dripping off his beard. Yeah. And he said this man was still cussing. And while he was cussing, he said, I just leaned around and was going to take the sleeve of my arm and wipe that spit off his face. He said William Booth stepped back like this and said, don't touch it. He said, these are medals for a good soldier of Jesus Christ. He said, let me wear them as long as I can. That's good, Brandon. Now that's being a good soldier. That's being a soldier. It's not fighting with your fist, but it's love. That's right. Sarah, if you'll go ahead and find something to play for me. God, yeah. We need some people in God's army. Some good soldiers for Jesus. Yeah. The Philistines are all around us and we need some people to raise up and to fight with us. Amen. So, so what this is, when I was in high school, they would send a recruiter every year from freshman year until I graduated. Recruiter to the army. And, and he wouldn't really try to, try to get you in with any of the benefits. Every time he would come, he would give you a challenge. He, 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 never, gave, he never gave it out to be easy. He gave it out to be hard. Yes. And it seemed like those young men in there that, that liked challenges, they'd always step up to the plate. And they'd try it out. Well, that's what Christianity is. It, it, it's not about coming to church three times a week and smiling. Amen. It's about fighting. It's about fighting. That's right, he said, be a good soldier for Jesus Christ. See, a few, a few months ago, I, I want to tell you all this, and, and I'll give an altar call and I'll be done. But it seemed like I, I fasted and I fasted and I fasted and I prayed and I prayed and I prayed. And I, I had all the works. I had more than anybody I knew for a few months. And I was laid in bed one night wondering why in the world I wasn't getting close to God. See, I was getting close in, in little tiny measures, but not what I thought. With the way I was praying and the way I was fasting and reading, I thought I, I should be on the mountain right now. One night while I was laid in bed, I was staring at the ceiling, and that's exactly what I was wondering. God, where you at? Pray, pr try to pray for hours a week. Try to read chapters every day. Try to fast a day a week. Where you at? While I was laying there, the Lord said, Though I give my body to be burned, and have not charity. And I thought, I missed it. I did everything else, and I missed it. I fasted, and I prayed, and I read. And I passed the poor and needy every day on my way to work and didn't lend out a hand. Is it, this how you fight the fight is you love one another. You, you, don't, you don't fight it with your fist. And a lot of times you don't even fight it on your knees. You just fight it by loving one another and loving people. It said, And it came to pass in those days that the Philistines gathered their armies together for warfare to fight with Israel. And Samuel was dead. We need some Samuels. We need some good soldiers. If, 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 you've been, if you've been AWOL lately and you've been out and the, and the king's not gave you orders to go out, would you come and pray tonight? If you feel challenged tonight to, to, to accept a call, would you come pray? Does anybody else want to come pray? The Bible said that, that our weapons of this warfare, it's not carnal, but it's spiritual and mighty through God in pulling down of strongholds. We've all been praying for Kayla. Where's she at? She's down there with the Philistines and there's a stronghold. We need some soldiers. And Israel needs a Samuel. Jesus said, if any man save his life, he'll lose it. But if any man lose his life for my sake, he'll save it. it. It's not about coming to church. It's not about dressing right. I figured out in, in that time span, it's not, it's not so much about works. It's just about loving one another. Offering a lending hand to lost people. That, that's a lot harder than praying and, and fasting to go to somebody that ain't dressed too nice and don't smell too good and just to love them.